Welcome everybody to the double week episode where we have our bye week for week 7 and week 8 against the Carolina Panthers. And there are some moves I think we need to make while we're in our bye week just because we need to get ahead of the curve. I've kind of felt this year we've had a lot of close games. We have some aging players, some positions that we need to get younger at. And I feel like if we don't do it now, part way through the season, it'll be too much for us to do in this next off season. And we would definitely not be able to get it all done. We would take a step back. And I would like to keep us competitive every year. So I think there's three things that I would love to do in this window. However, I don't know if we will actually be able to do each of those three things. So the three things that I want to look at is quarterback, defensive tackle, and cornerback. So obviously at quarterback right now, we have Dwight Saunders and we have Kellen Mund. Kellen Mund has been our career backup and Saunders has started every game that we've played, but he's just, he hasn't played very well. When we look at his ratings, they just they haven't progressed as well as you really would have liked. He's gotten better in terms of throw power, but his accuracies accuracies have con- have continued to stay low. They're just not reliable whatsoever. He does have good throw on the run, but that rating hasn't really shown on the field very well. Maybe that's due to awareness being a little bit lower. Speed has been all right. Stamina, though, it shows that he has 93 stamina. But as we've seen time and time again, he rushes for six yards or takes one hit, and his stamina is depleted almost all the way, and it always leads to fumbles, interceptions, to something not going right. And unfortunately, there's not much to look at in the next draft class. There's one draftable quarterback who's a top five, and we really don't want to be picking top five. So... I think we need to consider moving San, or moving Saunders on to a different team. So as I was going around, checking out all the team's rosters, team's needs, kind of just see what all was available to us, I found that the Rams are the most needy for a quarterback. They have Gardner Minshew, who, I mean, he's all right, but he's only a 72 with a morale boost. His medium and deep accuracies aren't that great. Doesn't really have a whole lot of throw power. And speed is honestly look, looks pretty similar to Saunders. So I feel like the Rams could be a great place for us to possibly send Saunders. And they do like him. They have the little green flag next to uh, his icon when we put him into the possible trade. But can't really trade away Saunders if we don't have a quarterback to replace him. And the Browns have a quarterback that I'm interested in. Not Baker Mayfield, but in Nick Robinson. He is 23 years old, has one year of experience. He's from LSU, superstar, 6'2", 213, so not a huge guy by any means. But he has some pretty good ratings to kind of just draw some interest at, at the least. Throw power is 90, which will help us get to the ball downfield. And is a little bit less than Saunders, so hopefully a little bit less of those overthrows on the deep routes. Short accuracy is a 90. That's higher than Saunders. Deep accuracy is an 81. I think that's about two or three less than Saunders. Medium accuracy can definitely use some work. But he has some decent uh, throw on the run, 85. Break sack, 82. He has 86 speed with 91 acceleration. 90 change of direction. So he is a threat to scramble, which in the past we've tried to use Saunders for. It hasn't really worked all too well. His stamina is a 94, which again, Saunders was, I think, a 93, and he had the stamina issue. I would hope Nick Robinson wouldn't, um, considering it's a little bit higher, but kind of hard to tell. He also has an 87 juke move, so he could make some plays on his feet rather than having to solely rely on passing the ball. He is a solid option that I would like to consider, especially, like I said, since there isn't anyone in the draft that we really see that we could go after. In terms of his superstar abilities, he has inside, dead eye, and he has closer, which is basically he's just clutch. In the second half, easier for him to get into the zone, which could definitely help out as we've 
kind of struggled sometimes in the second half, closing out games. So honestly, we could make an adjustment to these abilities if we're able to get him. But that's still something that's really solid that I feel like he has a higher ceiling than what we're getting from Saunders. And he's only, I think, four overall less. Similar age, but again, higher ceiling. Fits a little bit more of what we like to do with that scrambler. Kind of like more improviser, which we might upgrade more. I think our uh, current scheme prefers field general. But Nick Robinson is, I think, a solid option for us to go after. And in terms of what we could offer, um, they're looking for a quarterback, but they have an 83 in Mayfield. Left outside linebacker, we don't really have anyone we could offer there. We could offer um, some of our depth corners for sure, as we have Reed Jr., Sidney Jones, who had that great block on the field goal attempt, and unfortunately didn't give us much, um, and then a couple other guys beneath him. So we could definitely offer Sidney, and they're looking for receiver as well. And we've talked before about the, the drop in what Osborne could really do for us with the new scheme. He just doesn't fit very well. So I am curious to see if we offer some of these guys, if we're able to make this happen. I'm going to offer KJ Osborne and going to offer Sidney Jones the fourth. When we take a look, not too interested in uh, Osborne. They are interested a little bit in Sidney Jones. I don't know for sure if they will take this considering he's a superstar, but this could be really great and it's not going to cost us any picks. And it is very far away from us getting anything here. So what else can we consider? Honestly, not uh, they don't seem too interested in Osborne and it doesn't really raise it up that much at all. So we'll keep Sidney Jones on there, see what else we could do. In terms of draft picks, we have our first three. We traded away our fourth to uh, get Keenan Harvey, or Harvey Keenan, <laughs> in the uh, last draft. So we have the first three and our last three. If we offer a third, is that more or less than Osborne? It is more. Curious as to what that would get us to. So definitely looking like we're going to need to send in some higher picks. And with a second round pick, we do get really close. Now we're going to try a current two, next year's fifth, and Sidney Jones the fourth. And that will give us our new quarterback. Nick Robinson is heading to Minnesota. And like we said, the Rams are the perfect fit for him. They have cap space as well. They have a pretty good roster. They just are missing a quarterback. Um, so we definitely would want to target the Rams here. We just need to see what they will offer us. So he's not super high overall. He hasn't had tremendous stats, but he has won two Super Bowls. So I'm curious here. I'm going to put in a one and a six. I feel like that could be fairly reasonable for Saunders. And that's what we will get. I could have possibly gotten more for him, but due to the interception issues with him, I believe a mid to low first round pick and an additional pick is fairly good. I think it is fairly well matched for what he's given. And he's not a star or a superstar or anything. I believe he's just normal dev. He might be a star, but nothing that gives you any perks. So that is the first trade that I wanted to make today. There is two more positions, DT and corner. I haven't found too many corners um, that are younger that I feel like we could really bring in. There was one option though. The Titans have a fifth year Kristen Fulton, he's 25 years old, he's in his four years experience, so I believe it would be his fifth year. He's out of LSU, six foot, 197, he's the size that I like. He has some speed, has some press ability, it is an 80 with our coaching bonus, I believe that would go up to an 83. So, good press, he's an outside corner though, he's not much of a slot guy, and we have... Ward, who's our outside guy. Reed Jr.'s played all right in the slot. That kind of gives us Bradbury, who's just an extra guy who's played okay here and there this season. But Fulton would give us a younger guy 
who we could build around for a few years and not have to worry about rebuilding the cornerback class or the cornerback unit every single offseason. So he's an option, but I don't think he's a necessity. And then at the defensive tackle spot, a spot I would love to make an adjustment to right now, the only thing that's really an option in terms of young guys that we could develop is Antoine Stevens here from the Chiefs. You could see a lot of strength, a lot of block shedding, not a whole lot of pass rush moves. But after this season, we will be moving Graves back to DT. And I think Graves and Stevens could make a great combo, being Stevens the run stopper and Graves with an interior uh, pass rush. Unfortunately, due to the Kansas City's poor management, they don't have any cap space to allow us to make any move. They are in the negative, and because of that, you can't make any trades with them. Even though this would technically lessen their cap space, you can't make a move unless you get rid of all their cap, and they don't really have anyone who's not a starter that has a good chunk of cap that we could take on. But Stevens is someone that I am looking to possibly trade for maybe in the offseason. And the last trade we're going to make today is KJ Osborne. We are going to send him on to a new team. He's a 74 overall. And the team that most needs a receiver is the Patriots. They only have the red flag over on Osborne. I think they could really use him. They need some help. They, I think their top three, it's like a... High 80s, mid 80s, and then a 70. So they could definitely use Osborne's help. He's played great for us in the past. Just the new scheme doesn't fit him. I've put in a third and a seven here just to kind of gauge what they're thinking. So we will offer that and see where they're at. So they're definitely thinking that they shouldn't be sending a whole lot over. And in terms of our draft picks, we don't have a two. We don't have a four. We have two firsts. A third, a fifth, a six, actually two six, and a s two sevenths. I would like to possibly get a fourth. We'll see if they will if they'll take the four. We had the three and the seven. That was way too much for them. Perhaps the four will do. Pretty close. So I think we could use some of our lower picks here. Just chuck in our final pick. See where that gets us. Does move it up a little bit. And we'll toss in one of our six round picks, our later six round pick. KJ and a six will get us that fourth pick back. So we are back in the fourth round. KJ is going to head over to a team that could really use him. Uh, I didn't like having him sitting on this team not being utilized. We have a great top three. We've seen some good play from Sherrard Dyson. We would like to see some play from Willie Johnson and Tyrone Leary as well. So we've made a couple changes here on offense. We would have liked to address defense, just there wasn't really a way that we think we could really do that at this point. The corner group, we could have brought in someone, but I think we give Bradbury his year. Also give DJ Reed his year to see how he does at slot. He will be 28, so not a long-term solution. We still want to get younger, but... For now, I think we're okay with the adjustments we've made. And now we need to see how well they could do. So I will just do the weekly strategy here. I'm going to put the new quarterback in as a focus player for us. He's going to have two weeks to prepare for the Panthers game. And we're going to see how good or how bad he might be. U.S. Bank Stadium. Luckily for us, we have a home game to up and up to open up the first game for our new quarterback in Nick Robinson. There's been a lot of speculation that we would make a move for a new quarterback, and we finally did it. 
we make a trade with the Cleveland Browns to bring in their backup quarterback who just hasn't gotten time to see the field even though he has some great ratings. So we'll get to see how well they play out today. However, first down, gain of five. And we're going to try to ease Robinson in. He's had two weeks to prepare. We've set a very simple game plan for him as he gets to know his new team. And we're going to give the ball a bit to Dalvin today just to let Robinson get used to the team, get that connection going with his receivers. And on third and two, we'll come out with a heavy set. Two tight ends to the right. Thurston, our fullback, comes in. We're going to go right down the middle. Interesting pull that wasn't really supposed to be a pull there by Flanagan, but we get the first down. And for his first pass attempt, coming out here in the slants, they're in a double A-gap look. They're going to drop back. And he does have the ability to run, too, so we're going to look to utilize that, get to the outside, and I tried to stay down the sidelines, but no first. However, he's going to run for 19 yards. And he does bring a lot more mobility to the quarterback position than what we had with Saunders. So... There's going to be a lot of comparison this first year for sure, as Saunders did help us win two Super Bowls. I don't want to take that away from him. But at the same time, corners and safeties were taking the ball away from him a lot. So hopefully that will change here with Robinson. As we have a wide open in Wangwu, not able to stay in bounds, but first completion for Robinson. And it was first down as well. We're now down to the 22 offense going pretty smoothly here. Trying to utilize our blocks as well as we can. And Wangwu showing a bit of power lately. I got You just got to love it. He's primarily been known as a speedster, but definitely becoming a well-rounded running back. And as we get closer to the goal line here, we'll switch down a little bit. Go to a pistol rather than shotgun. Hand the ball off. Try to follow our blocks up front. I'm going to get a gain of about four or five yards. And I would love to start Robinson's career as a Viking off with a quick, easy touchdown. However, they do a good job of covering the guys. He's going to scramble for it. He's going to basically walk in. Robinson's first career touchdown as a Minnesota Viking goes on a scramble. He's doing a little dance, shaking it, enjoying the crowd, celebrating their new star quarterback. Or superstar, I should say. And of course, there was a couple moves we would have liked to make on defense to help us get younger while maintaining about the same level of play. Unfortunately, just weren't able to uh, find ways that we could really get that done in this window as we get a good stop. Reed Jr. comes in to make the tackle, only a gain of two on the first down run. And of course, this Panthers team is a team that we've seen fairly often in uh, this series. Typically, it's been in the playoffs as they go for a pass. Here, number four checks in at uh, at running back. So far, haven't seen any Christian McCaffrey. And, of course, Christian McCaffrey is listed here on the injury report. They say ready to play with a hit pointer problem, but for now, they've, ke they've kept him off the field. And that just happens to be very synonymous with what we've seen while playing against the Panthers. Is we've only had one game where Christian McCaffrey really ever played much at all. And that was in last year's playoff game where he played the full game. And we, of course, with our Super Bowl victory, we beat them. So not seeing a whole lot of him. But if you do want to see a lot of him, you got to check out the other series that we're running at the same time as this one. Of course, that is our California only rebuild challenge. You got to win a Super Bowl with playing with players only from California. It's really fun. We get the tackle here with uh, Keenan and Reed Jr., and last game, we started to bring a little bit of this safety blitz. We bring Henley just a little bit delayed, and it worked out pretty well for us. Not going to work too well there. They're going to find two, I believe that's more, open for a first down, down to the 36. But yeah, of course, like I was saying earlier in this episode pre-game, I really want to work on this D-line. We have two, two key guys that we're really going to be able to build around for a few more years, but... As I say it, one of the guys we're kind of worried about, J.J. Watt, he ends up taking a knee here, injured. Depending on what happens here will depend on what we do with Graves. And he's limping to the locker room, so not a good sign. Most likely Graves will be coming back in at DT, and one of our backup edge rushers will need to come in. 
And depending on how serious that injury is, will really make it very disappointing since we weren't able to make that trade with the Chiefs due to their cap space. But for right now, we've made an adjustment up front. So due to that injury, Graves will slide back down to DT as we wrap up the first quarter here. But yeah, Graves will slide back down to DT and Calhoun will come in at the edge spot. Technically, he is not our best inside guy as Graves get the tackle there. Just unfortunately, they squeak just enough of yardage to get the first down. And there's the update. Pulled groin. I have no idea at this point. I've seen some injuries that I thought would be a couple weeks that are immediately back for the next game. So we'll find out how bad his injury is after this game. But yeah, we brought in Calhoun. Not because he's the best next up. He's technically would be third or second best up. I guess would be the best way of putting it. If we're going by best overall, it would be Alton Robinson, who we brought in during the offseason. But Calhoun was a draftee of ours. We want to see him improve, and he gets a tackle for loss here, and that's the only way he's going to get better. So he has some youth to him. He has some good skills as well, just not super highly rated. But we need to get him out here, see what he could do. And unfortunately, due to the injury, it makes it a good time to do so. And with that tackle for loss, they're going to bring up a third and 11. I'm going to make a change here to our play call. Slide out our D-line a little bit. And that's going to be a wide open Tommy Tremble. Touchdown Panthers. He was just wide open. Blown coverage. I honestly can't tell if that was a linebacker or a safety that should have been there. But either way, we should have had someone. And I don't know if you can tell so far, Vikings lining up, at least on offense, we've been lining up in fairly similar formations, just varying in if they're under center, in pistol, or in shotgun. We've basically been running twins to the left, or really just twins to either side and one receiver and a tight end to the other. I'm trying to keep it simple here for the uh, first game here for Robinson as we're doing fantastic up front, blocking very well here for Cook. But of course, still want to make sure we have that connection here with Robinson and his new receiver. So we will see a little bit more passing as the game goes on here. As we're going to chuck this one up. Chark, single hand snag, not able to get away. I think that's J.C. Horn that came over late. But a tremendous catch there by Chark and pretty good throw there from Robinson, who has a interesting release to say the least. But... Nice job by Chart. Just skies up, single hand, snags that one, breaks the tackle, and gets a few more yards. Really can't ask for anything more than that. Again, we we're trying to bring out Dyson here, utilize that speed, but they always know when to bring their safety down. So we're going to check to a run here, which Robinson does know some of the calls. We went over that in practice and get a good run, Cook, down to the four. And now we finally have a semi favorable. Safety, not down at the line, but definitely close to the box. Bring Dyson here off the edge. Try to utilize that speed and not into the end zone, but down to the one. And on first and goal, we will bring out the goal line formation here. Going to hand it off to Cook. See, I mean, really good blocking up front. Corner comes around late, gets the tackle, but too late. We're in the end zone. Going to give us a 14-7 lead with an extra point conversion. And the Panthers offense will take the field out here in a tight formation. Had three receivers set out. We're in a zone coverage. And really good blocking. Or really good coverage, I should say. Blocking was pretty good, but eventually broke down. And Hunter gets the sack. Coming a lot earlier in this game rather than last game. And of course, last game was some late game drama. We ended up losing it. A bit later into the game, the overtime to be more specific, we had a fumble that uh, Dalvin Cook fumbled. It really hasn't happened very often. And we just weren't able to get the stop on defense to give our offense another shot. They ended up getting a pass to, I believe it was Brandon Cooks, the Texans. And uh, they won ended up winning the game. Graves back at DT, back getting more sacks, this time just in front of the goal line. Fourth and 35. I think we need to bring a little bit of pressure here. Backed all the way up here. We're going to try to bring the pressure off the edge here with Keenan. 
Trying to see if he could get in, and no good blocking. We were maybe a step or two away. They get the punt off. Nice spin move by Nwongwu. Going to set us up to start our drive at the 46. And here is a new formation here for Robinson. Going to have three receivers out to the right, one to the left. And then we are going to make a change here. Just change it to a run play, because he probably doesn't know all of our audibles yet. So we'll just check it down to a run. Get good blocking up front. Cook for a first down, down to the 34. And we still have plenty of time left, so not going to call any timeouts yet. And this is a bit more of a favorable matchup, however. Looks like they're going to be bringing a safety blitz. We'll slide the line over to the left. Tell Cook, can you block for me? And we're going to look to see if maybe we could get somebody. And that's going to be a sack. We had some guys breaking open late, but Burns able to get in there in time, get the sack. And I think we'll call our first time out here. Had a long developing play on that last one, and the corners did a nice job of jamming the receivers. Kind of slowed down the uh, progression. Let's see what we could do here, however. So again, not good blocking. Going to be another sack. Going to bring up a third and 29, and we're not going to bother calling any timeouts here. In fact, we're just kind of going to run a, a gimmick play here. We're going to come out in the Wildcat. Just... Get the ball to Nwong. We'll try to see if he could use his speed to get around the edge. Really doesn't. We'll get a gain of a little bit. Brian Burns ends up getting the tackle. Bringing up a fourth and 23. However, we're just going to let this time run down. We're going to head into the locker room unless they end up calling a timeout. And they end up not calling their timeout. So we're going to head into halftime here. Up 14-7. to And seeing some pretty good play so far from our new quarterback. Haven't tossed it around too much. Primarily been running. But just seeing those little bits here and there, definitely seeing some progression in terms of quarterback play. Denver, Falcons, game tied up 14-14, minute and 12 seconds left in that first half. And Teddy B, not having himself a bad game, two touchdowns. Going up north to the Bills, hosting the uh, 49ers and not looking too good for the Bills. They're losing 21-7, minute 44 seconds left in that second quarter and east coast we have the philadelphia eagles and the saints game tied 7-7 neither quarterback really taking charge of this game seems pretty synonymous with most of the games we looked at and of course we'll be kicking the ball off to start the second half here hopefully we have a good drive for our defense We've gotten quite a few sacks, or at least getting the pressure in this game. And honestly, it's really nice to see Graves back at DT. And the Panthers will come out. Two receivers to the right, two tight ends to the left. So they are going to go to a go for a run. And that left-hand side, and that is the side that Graves was on, kind of got pushed back a little bit. Of course, we know Graves is primarily the interior pass rusher. He has some run stopping, but not uh, a big size or anything like Pierce's. Daniil Hunter, I mean, that was just not a good call for their offense. No one even touched Hunter. He goes off clean around the outside, gets his second sack, maybe even third sack of the day. And that will bring a favorable third down for us, third and 12, as they have three receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to set up a screen pass. And that was read very well. Harrison Smith gets the tackle basically right after the catch. Loss of one, and they're going to be punting it back to us. And our offense will take the field for the first time in this second half. Going to come out in the pass as well. And another sack. Well, offensive line not doing a really good job here in pass protection. So I'm sure the new quarterback isn't liking too much. And because they're getting through so quickly, going to go for... A really quick play where we just basically hand it off, try to use Dyson's speed, get around the edge. We do get a really good block from Chark, takes up two guys. Dyson heading down the sidelines, ends up trying to tight walk in. A little slow after that hit to get up, I mean. Which, of course, would be very, very sad for him. I mean, rookie year, we just traded away KJ to get him on the field a bit more. Hopefully nothing too serious for him. And it's an upper arm fracture, so I'm pretty sure his season is about done. Gotta love the timing with Madden. 
in his place will be fellow rookie Willie Johnson that will come in for that uh, fourth receiver spot. And I think we need to do a delay flay fade here with Flanagan. See what that can give us. Instead, we're going to go for Lucas here across the middle. No one covered him. Going to be easy completion. Three for three on the day for Robinson. Like I said, we aren't forcing the passes today. Trying to let Robinson get warmed up here. Get used to the crowd. Get used to his teammates. Find that connection. We're going to give Dalvin a few more rushes today. And it's working well for him. And on second and seven, I would love to go for Flanagan here in the corner. Going to depend on what these uh, corners do. They end up dropping back. What kind of coverage we get. Instead, we're going to go for Leach. That, that pass is honestly my bad. <laughs> I had him throw it a bit low. Otherwise, we might have had a, a touchdown right there. I mean, just catch and run. Fortunately, due to my placement, it doesn't work out too well. We get the first down here, though, with Cook. And I don't think this is a good time to do it, but honestly, I'm fair. Like, I kind of want to toss this up to Leach in the corner here. However, not with that coverage. We're going to try to scramble out here. Great pursuit by the edge guy. We're just going to have to toss that one away. And both Robinson and Cook were pretty tired after their last few plays. So we're going to bring in Kelly. Hand the ball off right down the middle. And oh, nice play by 94. I thought we had a touchdown. Instead, just a gain of four. And on third and goal. Was going to do a run here. I'm not too sure about it. I'm going to check to a pass. Maybe Thurston will be open. We're going to dump it off to him. And a great play. Heads up play by that corner. Part of me really wants to go for it here, but let's take the two scored lead with a field goal. Ku has it up and about right down the middle. Gonna give us a 10 point lead, 17 to seven. About mid-ish way through the third quarter. And we're actually quite a bit further into the third quarter than I was thinking. A minute and 30-ish, minute 29 seconds left in the third. Not a very good heads up play by our corner, Reed Jr as the ball was passed right at him, but he was too busy in man coverage on another guy. Completion to Tremble. And speaking of Reed Jr., let's try to bring him on a blitz here. Corner blitz on the short side of the field. I don't like that animation that we got, but we get the tackle with our linebackers after a first down run. Panthers come out here with twins to both sides. And I hit the receiver just a little bit too early. Try to time that up perfectly, and that's going to be pass interference. And that will give him a free first down to the 46. Continue to run some man coverage here. Because they're going to get that ball out quick. Kendrick's not able to get over there in time. Big hit there from Bradbury. Don't see that too often from our corners. And they're driving pretty well on this drive. <laughs> As we're going to hit the end of the third quarter. Going to head into the fourth quarter. We're up 17-7. We will start here. Three receivers out to the right. One to the left. We're going to go out and man coverage too. So we're going to go for a deep pass here. That one ends up falling short with the hit. We're about right when he went to pass it. And I would have went with a corner blitz, but they come out three to the right, so we'll check down to a or check out to a zone play here. Try to sit right underneath the coverage here. They go to the outside. I don't think that one was brought in in bounds, and they don't say it was either. Bring up a third and ten at the 27. Still staying out in that three receiver set to the right. As they go deep, Bradbury just gave up on that play. We should have had a... I'm pretty sure Bradbury's supposed to be over the top. We had a corner stay underneath. Moore, however, into the end zone. Blown coverage. Bradbury. Devontae Adams. That was it. He gave up a huge pass to him that was for a touchdown. And then we took him off of Adams and put Ward on him. And Weird first step there from Cook. Has him going backwards and then tackled. Loss of three on first down. Of course, we're only up three now. We'd like to see uh, a touchdown drive from Robinson here. And, oh, he breaks breaks the sack. Going to hold on to the fumble, or going to hold on to the ball, not fumble here either. Get a gain of a few. I'll bring up third and eight. Take a look. How is the fatigue looking for him? Definitely low. So just that just seems to be a thing with quarterbacks in Madden here. 
as no, absolutely zero people blocking Burns on that play. He gets a sack. That looked very similar to the last Hunter sack. Fourth and 17. Going to need a punt on away. And check that to the punting in a way. They actually muffed the punt. It was a really bad punt. Only went like 10 yards. And it bounced right off of their return guy. We picked it up. And we're going again. Going to focus on running a little bit here. As Robinson is uh, honestly pretty sore. He's taken a lot of hits today. Try to use in Wang Wu's speed. Get to the outside. He's done a really good job of breaking first contact. Really need to try to get him the ball a bit more. We just have so many running backs that we want to use. Now on the first down here, we'll take a shot. See uh, who's able to get open. We're sending Wang Wu on a wheel route as well. We need to check this one down. Jefferson with a reception. Uses his speed. Get down to the sideline. Down to the 19 with a first. And stops the clock. Granted, we don't really need to be stopping the clock because we're leading here in the fourth quarter. But that's what happened. Follow DeCastro here, and we get there a little bit too quick, and somehow we get tackled through a block. And second and eight, sitting at about three and a half minutes remaining. Going to go again, check down here, Jefferson on a drag route. Going to get us another first down, this time down to the seven. And I would love again to go with Flanagan to the corner here. Also potentially Leach on a zig route. Though they do a good job covering that. We're going to need to try to scramble out here. And oh, oh, I had Leach late. Just wasn't able to get the ball off. It's going to be a sack for Gross Matos. And on second and goal. Going to try to run a draw play here. Not too sure if that's a good idea or a bad idea. Try to use Nwang Wu's speed. Get to the outside. Not able to cut back in. Henderson gets the tackle, but we're down to the two. And coming out of the two-minute warning... Again, I kind of want to... I'm going to send Leach on the zig route. And again, a good job from that corner. Henderson just sits. And that's another time we miss out on a touchdown at our own goal line. However, this time I don't think a field goal would help us out much. A touchdown for them would win them the game. So a field goal doesn't help us. A touchdown here, though, pretty much seals it. And we're going to drop it. Pass a little bit too far along, but Leach normally very sure-handed. He ends up dropping this one. It's going to be a turnover on downs at the two. Panthers take over here. They come out in a shotgun set. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. We're going to bring a double A-gap blitz. And, ooh, we came close to a safety. Once again, they did not block Hunter. He comes screaming off the edge. And Roundtree just able to get the pass out before he gets sacked this time. Oh, oh, this is bad. Tremble is a fast tight end, too. We were a split second too late there. We're going to have a roughing the passer for Alex Brooks. Really unfortunate there. I thought we were about to get the sack that would have given us an extra two points and the ball. However, opposite really happens. They get a huge chunk down to the 14 with the flag. And now we'll, we're going to start calling some timeouts. We need some time left. Trying to run a bit of a combination of just running some man coverage and trying to blitz a little bit to force some drama here. And they threw it directly at Ward, who was not able to get the catch. Instead, touchdown. Panthers take the lead late. That's to Slayton. Going to put them up 20-17 with an extra point would be 21. Well, we want to see what Robinson's all about. He has a chance to make himself a little mini legend today. However, not going to start out with him on the field on the first play. Instead, in Wong, we try to use his speed to get around the edge. That doesn't happen. And we have two timeouts left, about a minute remaining. And we need to get down the field and score a touchdown. It's going to end up scrambling here. Robinson gets something and gets out of bounds. And of course, we're working with a smaller playbook here as Robinson doesn't have all the knowledge quite yet. We're going to go for Leach this time. This time he holds on to it. And we're going to get good chunk down to the 36 out of bounds. Two timeouts left, 52 seconds. We have time. We just need to be smart about it. And they're going to play their safeties a little bit 
shallow, only 10 yards deep. I would love to see Chark over the top here. And we have that option. Can his speed get there? Pass thrown a little bit too far. Or right, don't want to forget about the run game entirely. We have two timeouts. Gone well for us in this game. Doesn't go too well for us there. Now sitting at about 30 seconds left. We're going to run hurry up. Going to roll out again here. Take what we have. Going to try to scramble forward. Holds on to the ball. Call our second timeout. And I am primarily looking at Flanagan here. Going to check Cook down to block first. Now we're going to... That was not a fumble. <laughs> we need to take our last time out. I told them to throw it. And they say it was a fumble instead of an incomplete pass. And we have to take our last time out. Really unfortunate there. I'm just going to have Cook block. Seems like the offensive line struggling a little bit in this game. Toss this up. Chark, single one-hand grab again. Get out of bounds. Save us some time. We have 10 seconds. We're down to the five. Huge, huge plays from Chark today. And I'm sure everyone knows what we're running here. Slant play. Will this get the job done? We're going to find Jefferson in the back of the end zone. They say he taps both feet in. We take the lead with, what, five seconds left? Great rollout pass there from Robinson. He thought about running it. 27 stepped up, and he finds Jefferson along the back. Definitely has both feet in. Can we just hold on for the last five seconds? And we will come out in prevent defense. I'm going to crunch down with the corners, try to throw off some timing. We don't need anything crazy here. They get the catch, but we get the tackle. We're going to walk out here at home with a victory. Two close games back-to-back. -back. This time, we get the dub and in regular time. But next time, can we not make it so close? Oh, we're going to walk off here, getting another victory on the year. Passing game wasn't bad. Rushing game definitely was really good. We only allowed 18 rushing yards on defense as well, so... Definitely took care of business, I would say, with what our, our strategy was going into this game. And I just want to point out, Robinson, in his first game, 71.4% completion percentage. I think that was better than almost any game we had with Saunders. And after that game, we get the update here. So it is not the end of the season for Sherrard Dyson like we feared it might have been with an upper arm fracture. Instead... Apparently he's just missing two games past this one that we past this one that we just played, and JJ Watt will be back for next week. So he ended up having to leave the rest of the game. Graves came back in to play DT, did a great job. We have the tackle for loss with Calhoun, who then took Graves spot. So not bad. Really good to see that Dyson will won't be missing the rest of his rookie year as we made a trade so that he could get more play time. So that would have been really unfortunate. But Good news there. Well, not awful news. And as we sim on over to week nine, get a couple bits of information here. One, next game, we, 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 will, be, be, we will be playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They've had a very successful career in this universe. Been to the playoffs every year, two Super Bowl appearances. And this is the first time we will be playing them in the regular season. Other news, we have Christian Derrissaw returning from injury. We'll see how long that lasts. And another one of our practice squad players have been signed. I think we have four left. And there's no one really else left to sign that's worth anything. But also important to note, in these standings, the NFC North is now in control by the Detroit Lions. Due to our bye week, we are now one game under them technically in terms of wins. We've both lost the same amount, and we've beaten them once already. So, basically, we have to make sure we win this Jacksonville game and then put a stamp on them in Week 10 as we will face again come Week 10. So, really big things happening for us in the NFC North this next week and the week after. So, make sure you guys are sticking around. And also, let me know what you guys think about the trades we make to, that we made today. 
We sent Saunders to the Rams. We figured it was a really good fit. They had some good talent, a little bit aging talent, but they needed a quarterback to try to give them one last hoorah. They're not a bad team this year either. The pick we got was 20, so they're in the playoff race. And we ended up getting a slightly younger quarterback who has a lot more mobility and a higher potential. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments section below. And let me know what you thought about the other two guys that we would have liked to make moves for. It just didn't, the timing didn't really work with the Chiefs cap. And we didn't really need to trade for another corner as we have our starting three for this year. But let me know what you think about them, if we should target them, maybe come this off season or anything like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was another close one. We got the victory in the end instead of throwing any interceptions, which so nice to see. This feels refreshing now that we have a new quarterback under the helm and he'll have a little bit more control come this next game. But I hope you guys enjoyed and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.